surprise, mother. Hello everyone and welcome to RimWorld Infinite Lives where we are going to be playing as Lazarus, the living corpse himself, who every time he dies, he comes back to life. Now it's going to be pretty straightforward, just every time Lazarus and only Lazarus dies, we will resurrect him no matter what. Now to demonstrate this, I decided for Lazarus to go ahead and punch a wolf in the head until it got angry enough to kill him. And as you can see, it is literally as simple as clicking a button. This would be the first death of the series. After pulling his soul from the depths of the underworld, I decided to make him fight the wolf again until he killed it. Unfortunately, the wolf killed him a second time and we had to bring him back to life once again. I then spotted Lazarus laying beside some trees, daydreaming about how he could end this hellish nightmare he called life. It was so bad that Lazarus went into a daze and decided to wander into a local cave where a bunch of bugs were just dying to murder him. After I forcefully defied the laws of nature, I brought him home to build a bed and to work on the base. Lazarus also went ahead and created a knife so he could defend himself. This would only slow down the inevitable process of him dying and me having to resurrect him multiple times. After some time passed, we finally had our first event. We had a manhunting group of guinea pigs wander into the area, looking to murder Lazarus. Little did these guinea pigs know, Lazarus did not fear death, nay, he embraced death because death was an old friend of his, and also because I would bring him back to life if he died. After the guinea pig attack, we finally got our first harvest of lettuce in to make some meals out of. Mmm, lettuce. I bet Lazarus wishes he could die and stay dead now. As we were tending to our crop, a local grizzly bear decided to begin hunting Lazarus. But Lazarus was courageous. He took his knife and just started stabbing anything that he could on the bear. Lazarus had a sharp steel knife, but unfortunately the bear was a bear and he ended up murdering Lazarus. Thank God for me though, because I brought him right back from hell. And I immediately made him pick up his knife and go back in to slay that bear. Regardless of how many times the bear killed us, at the end of the night, we were going to be making a meal out of it. Unfortunately, Lazarus' little tussle with the bear ended up in some infections. Uh, we didn't really worry about tending that, though, because, you know, if he dies, I'm just going to bring him back to life again, so... While Lazarus was just running around frolicking outside with infected wounds, a rat went mad and decided to try and murder the man. And unfortunately, the combination of infected wounds and rat bites ended up killing Lazarus, uh, but obviously I brought him back to life again. We had some visitors who had just left our little colony, and they actually left us a top hat and a slice cap. I don't know why I thought to mention this, but it was nice of them. In the dead of night, we received a call for help. This person was being guarded by two man-hunting raccoons, and we would have to go and save them, and they would join us. Shortly after arriving there, Lazarus was then attacked by the two raccoons, but luckily for us, we had the power of a steel knife. After killing the raccoons, we saved the refugee, and they joined us. It's worth mentioning, when I sent Lazarus out on caravans, I was a bit careless. Really, at any point, if we lost him in a caravan, I wouldn't be able to revive him because it would just say caravan lost. But, to be honest with you, I didn't really take that into consideration until I was editing this video, and it just kind of hit me that uh, this series could have been over with before Episode 1 was even created. Now, while tending to our refugee that we rescued, we ended up getting a call for help from another person who offered to join us for a temporary period of time if she could stay here. Naturally, we accepted, and she quickly went to work mining out our kitchen, as well as tending to some of our crops in our field. A little bit of time had passed after this, though, and we ended up having a man-hunting pack of raccoons, as well as a royal person who was being chased by a man-hunting cat. 
Naturally, we accepted and gave refuge to the Duchess or whatever they were. If nothing else, we were good people. We made quick work of the man-hunting animals and sent the royal back home and their shuttle. Funny enough, though, a deserter from the same empire offered to join us if we would offer them protection from some of the soldiers hunting them down. Shortly after accepting, the deserter joined us at our colony, and not far behind them was the soldier that was hunting them. Lazarus, equipped with only his war mask, decided to get down and dirty with the soldier and just start stabbing everything. He even took a few shotgun blasts. Fortunately, we survived the soldier, but after that, our refugee, who we allowed to stay here for a temporary period of time, turned against us, and we ended up having to murder her. Late in the night, Lazarus' shotgun wound had been infected for quite some time, and he ended up dying from it, but that's alright because, you know, I brought him back to life. And after returning from purgatory, he decided to go sit in the kitchen. Our deserter colonist and the refugee that we had rescued ended up getting into a fistfight. She was butt-ass naked and he was fully equipped in flak armor. So I guess you could assume who won the fight there. One evening, a boom rat lost its damn mind and decided to attack Lazarus. So I sent him in to strangle it to death and let it explode upon him. Uh, whether or not he died really didn't matter, of course. Then we were being raided by a nice pirate lady wielding dual heavy pistols. As we were having a shootout with her, Lazarus, who had food poisoning, was sluggishly coming from the side to flank her with his steel knife. We ended up downing her, but I didn't feel like trying to capture her and recruit her, so we just went ahead and stripped her of all her belongings, and uh, we just kind of left her out there in the rain. And then shockingly, one evening, Lazarus decided to begin attacking the other colonists. But that really wouldn't be too much of an issue, as they could use deadly force against him. It seemed to me that killing Lazarus and then forcefully resurrecting him again would probably stop his little temper tantrum. So I forced the other colonists to shoot him and then come up upon him and finish the job. And after they finally murdered the only friend they had in this colony, and pretty well this world, they got to watch me pull him away from the icy clutches of death. After that, a transport pod crashed with a gentleman inside. I decided to rescue him. Whether or not he joined us would be completely up to him. So Lazarus tracked out into the snow and got the naked man and brought him back home where we could properly tend to his wounds and make sure he didn't die. Then, after we tended to his wounds and had a few good chats with him, the butt-ass naked fool decided to join us. Oh, weren't we ever so lucky. Now, someone who was part of a caravan that had stopped by ended up dying out there, so we gave the naked guy his clothes. They were tainted, but they were better than freezing. Then I got a good shot of Lazarus depressively just eating some berries out in the snow. But son of a bitch, right after that, Pickles, the naked guy who's wearing the tainted clothing, went into a murderous rage and decided to kill La- Oh, uh, I guess it doesn't really matter, does it? Uh, go ahead and kill him. It took him long enough to finish the job. Little did he know about Lazarus was I would refuse to let him die over and over again. Lazarus re-equipped everything and went on like nothing happened. His friend definitely did not murder him in the dining room five minutes ago. After some time had passed, for whatever reason, I decided to send Lazarus out to a local hunting work site to, I suppose, steal everything that they had and possibly capture somebody so we could recruit them and we'd have some extra manpower. After arriving at the hunting site, Lazarus decided to take a little snooze out next to the sidewalk for God knows whatever reason. This man truly does not fear death. The hunters began coming out of their camp to attack Lazarus. Uh, they were only equipped with a club and a bow, though, so his heavy pistols made quick work of one, and the other decided to run away. Well, we decided to steal their dining tables, some leather, and some other goodies they'd occurred at the hunting site. After returning home, another person called us in distress. They were being attacked by some man-hunting snow hares. They offered to join us here if we would offer them protection, so we accepted. 
Some time had passed and then the snow hares arrived at our colony. They were ready to tear our eyes out and murder us. Lucky for us though, a trading caravan had been visiting us and so they took the brunt of the damage from the snow hares and ended up surviving. Some time later we had some visitors visiting the colony and through our means of diplomacy we asked them quote unquote nicely to join us. We captured one and we ended up murdering the other one in the night snow. And holy shit, the one that we did kill had some really awesome flamethrowers. I decided to give these to Pickles for the time being. If we find somebody more suitable for them, we'll obviously let them have them. But these were really awesome, and uh, as you can see, we went ahead and tested them out as well. Less exciting than flamethrowers, though, was that most of our colonists ended up catching the flu. I wasn't really worried about Lazarus. We could always bring him back. But the other two, we could not do that, so we had to tend to them right away. And while this was ongoing, we ended up recruiting one of the visitors that we imprisoned. And we were even kind enough to let him form some odd spiritual and mental bond with this orange tree that was growing inside our base. Ah yes, young Turkey would now be the keeper of the Gorlan tree. To celebrate, he and Lazarus decided to play a riveting game of hoopstone out beside the base, while a massive thrumbo lurked in the background. We end the episode on a fairly strong note as well, because we finally finished our research into electricity. Now we could finally harness the power of electricity, and we could make, you know, lights and all this other junk that would be useful to us. But I do hope you guys have enjoyed the very first episode of RimWorld Infinite Lives. Let me know what you think about the series in the comments section down below. I would really appreciate it, and I appreciate you guys very, very much. I hope you have an absolutely wonderful day.